Welcome to the Quit by Healing podcast. Today, one of the things I want to pick your brain on, Shane, like you had this concept of levels of self-development, which I thought was purely brilliant because there's tons of advice out there, but they never actually put it into context for you, right? Yeah. So you can walk away from listening to something and be like, wow, that was amazing, and then have zero positive or net positive impact on your life. Yeah, and I think that's it, what basically happens is that you get, there's a lot of advice on how to improve yourself or how to solve specific problems in your life or whatever, how to get the outcomes you want. But the problem is that different levels of advice will apply to like different levels of stages of development, essentially. And one uh, simple, like a concept to keep in mind is if you, in any kind of growth experience, as you're developing yourself or as you're building your business or as you're improving your fitness level or whatever it is, you will often encounter plateaus and you will often encounter the situation where you realize that what got you here won't take you there, right? Mm. So if we take the example of like building a business, right? For most people who, who bootstrap a business from zero, like I initially, it's just like a lot of elbow grease, right? It's like you're just putting in all the work, you're putting in the hours, like you're working like crazy and you're doing everything yourself. And you can get to a certain level of success with that, but at some point you realize, okay, I've kind of maxed out how much effort I can put in. Yeah. And I, if I want to grow further beyond this point, I have to start systematizing things. I have to start hiring people. I have to start doing other kinds of work. Yeah. And what got me here, just to kind of, you know, head down, grind as hard as possible, is not going to take me to the next level. Because I actually have to step away from doing everything myself if I want to have a chance to actually build a team and create systems and build a real business, essentially, right? <laughs> right. So, and that's just like a very simple example where you can clearly see, oh yeah, the, the thing that got me to this level, I can't just do more of the same to get to the next level. But the exact same thing is true for all personal yeah. growth. Practically everything, yeah. yeah. And so the problem is that if you are in that early stage of your business, and you listen to a podcast with a super successful CEO or something, and he's talking all about systems and whatnot. And it's like, that may all sound good, but it actually doesn't apply to where you are right now, right? Yeah. And vice versa. And I think that is where often uh, people can have also a very frustrating experience where it's like, why doesn't this work for me, right? I'm, I'm listening to all this. Uh, I think this is especially true, right? When you look at self-development, success, podcasts, whatnot. It's often, you know, interviewing like the world's greatest fitness coach or the yeah. billionaire CEO or whatever. And they tend to talk about very high level stuff where you're just like, well, why doesn't this work for me? Well, it's because you're not at that level and you essentially need different advice to even get to where that advice applies. Yeah. Some examples of what you're saying are, this happens a lot with Elon Musk, to be honest, right? Mm. <laughs> Elon Musk, top 10 tips for productivity. He wakes up at whatever, does only four hours of work. Well, yeah, because he has hundreds, I don't know if it's hundreds of thousands, but probably thousands of employees, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And similarly, The Rock's diet to <laughs> get in shape for Fast and Furious. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you're not going to do this for 90 days and look like The Rock, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, exactly. So, and yeah, I think it's useful to have some awareness of, of these different levels. And I basically, well, I laid out what are essentially four different levels, or yeah. it's basically level zero to level three. Um, and... The idea is just let's map this out and give yeah. everyone a sense of what is going on and what kind of advice will get me from my, the level I'm at to the next level. Yeah, this obviously applies to practically everything, but we're talking about it from the perspective of porn addiction and quitting porn, right? Yeah. And okay, so we have four levels of people we have identified. Mm -hmm. So I guess the best way to utilize this podcast would be we can list out the four levels and the one that you were like, oh, that sounds like me. You can either skip directly to that timestamp or whatever or listen to the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, actually, let me ask you that. Then, so level zero, I'll list them out and then mm -hmm. uh, please expand on them. So level zero is a no lifer. Yeah. What does that mean? So level zero is basically where your life is a total mess. Okay. And you can also think of it as power levels, okay? And... Uh, Level zero is you have virtually no power. Right. And by power, I simply mean your power level is essentially how able are you to make things happen in your life. And there are some ways in which, so, you know, you can be powerful in, in different ways. 
one of them obviously is let's say you have money well if you have money you can make things happen that you can't make happen if you're broke right but it also applies to lots of other things such as social connections right if you know the right people you can make things happen if you have no social connections and also no social skills and you're not charismatic and you don't communicate well then you can't make the same things happen right yeah. and also importantly let me also point out a lot of this is look for example if i'm having a really bad day if I notice that, I, I don't know, I'm worrying, I'm ruminating, I'm maybe slipping into kind of a depressive mode of thinking, I have all kinds of tools to address that. First of all, I have the awareness to notice that it's happening to me. I can make a choice and be like, you know what, I don't want to feel like this. And I can use introspective writing. I can meditate. I can use breath work to regulate my nervous system. I can reach out to friends. I, can, I have all these tools to change my inner experience, mm. right? I can decide I don't want to feel like this and I can do something about it. And that's also a form of power because lots of people would just be like, well, I'm sad. And even if you tell them, okay, well, meditate. It was like, I don't know how to meditate. I've never done it, right? Right, right. <laughs> or, you know, introspect, like figure out what's going on inside you. I don't know how to do that. I've never done it, right? Yeah. You don't have the power to change your internal experience. So all of that is basically, that's what I mean when I say power level, right? And a level zero is someone who basically has no power. So you don't have the ability to, ch to make changes based on what you would like to see, either externally in the world or internally in your internal experience. You lack the tools, you lack the capability, you lack the awareness to make anything happen. That's basically level zero. Right, and I think one, one thing to highlight here is so many of the things you mentioned are things that if you have them in your life, you take them for granted, yeah. right? It's like I, for example, I have friends. I can just I just message people. Yeah. Right. But there are people who who don't have that, and it's it's kind of ridiculous to even think of it in that perspective. Like, oh, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean you can't stand up and walk outside the building? Like, there yeah. are people who are like that, right? And these are the extreme cases you're yeah. you're referring yeah, to yeah. here in the no lifer zone, right? Yeah. And also, this is where it kind of connects to you know porn addiction. So, porn addiction being the main topic that we that we cover so far but what you notice once you get to the point where you realize okay i'm addicted to pornography i want to do something about it you quickly realize that there's no way to overcome this addiction without essentially doing self-improvement <laughs> right <laughs> basically you there's stuff that you need to fix in your life in order to in order to overcome this problem and addiction is so this is why you know the, the, all the other levels are if you overcome the addiction you will probably find yourself progressing along those levels mm even if that wasn't the original intention, right? Yeah. But addiction is also a typical thing that keeps people stuck at level zero because addiction is deeply disempowering. Mm -hmm. It is essentially the situation where you are no longer in control of your actions. That's essentially the experience you have as an addict. Right? I wanted to quit and then somehow, you know, something triggered me and I just kind of went into autopilot and I relapsed again. And for many addicts, that's happened like a thousand times, yeah. right? You, you want to quit. You're trying to use your willpower to do it. You, you have the best intentions and somehow it keeps happening. And, and that's basically addiction. Addiction is the experience of this powerlessness. Like, why can't I decide mm. to do something and then do it? Like, what's going on? And often that also, because it because of what it does to your brain, it basically, it, it weakens your willpower and it puts you into that kind of automatic response mode more often than into, uh, let's say, a, a, a willed action mode, right? You're much more in just autopilot mode. And it, um, it creeps in and it basically takes over more and more of your time. Because let's be honest, most porn, ad porn addicts and most people these days are also addicted to a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's like you're spending some amount of time watching porn, you're spending some amount of time like just social media, phone addiction style, right? You're maybe yeah. playing video games, you're maybe, you know, smoking weed, you're maybe doing all kinds of other stuff. And all of this, which is all compulsive, like you know that is not aligned with your higher life goals to spend, you know, five hours playing video games after scrolling social media for five hours, right? It's like, just a yeah. point there the lack of having higher level goals can also lead to this True. outcome because you feel it internally, right? Yeah, exactly. You, you might not even know what you want to do with your life. And so you kind of default to whatever is most comfortable. 
But my point is, like, you get used to doing this, you become this this consumer of all these different things that you're addicted to to varying degrees, and they take up so much of your time that you don't you don't have time to build a great life for yourself. Right? Yeah. Because when are you going to do it? If you're spending hours and hours a day just on a screen, like, when are you going to do the things that will make you happy and healthy and successful and so on? So it really steals, like, it steals your power, it steals your future, and also while we're at it, right, it, it changes your brain in ways where essentially you're, you I mean, you get better at whatever you do. So you're becoming a better and better consumer. You're, you're getting better and better at just being in zombie mode and consuming nonsense. And all of this is disempowering. All of this is puts you on a downward spiral of just less and less and less power, more and more suffering. And you're trying to escape the suffering with more consumption and more addiction. And eventually, hopefully, I mean, if you're listening to this, then you've gotten to the point where you're like, I'd like to break out of this cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I would just like to add something to the things you're saying. It's the distraction model from near AL, mm -hmm. like doing what you want to do versus distracting yourself, right? So the opposite of distraction is traction in his, in his framework. Mm -hmm. And they're the two types of triggers we experience are internal or external, right? So external, like, I don't know, watching porn, for example, yeah. or, uh, getting triggered off social media and whatnot. But the internal ones, those are the ones that remind me of this the, from what you're talking about. Not even having the time to think about what should be my goals because if that thought comes up, immediately you feel this emotional pain internally like, oh my God, I don't have goals, right? Yeah. But our, f our brain's job is not to not to make sure we live the most prosperous, successful life ever. It's homeostasis and to keep us in sur surviving. Yeah. So immediately it's like, oh, pain, distraction, boom. And your go-to yeah. distraction could be anything. It could be smoking, porn, whatever. And in this case, I'm assuming it would be mostly porn, right? Yeah. Well, or even like, I think that that is a lot of our, you know, quote unquote, normal addictions that everybody has. Like everybody's addicted to their phone these days. And that is one of the functions it serves is it makes sure that you always have an escape from yeah. thoughts like that. So, because yeah, maybe if you, if you like sit, <laughs> if you st sit in stillness with your thoughts, you might have thoughts like, oh my God, I, what am I doing with my life? I don't even have goals. Like you were saying, that's unpleasant, but maybe you also like, actually I have goals and I know that I'm not. Yeah. And um, I don't know how to do them. I don't yeah. know how to get there. And I can tell that currently I'm not on the path to that or just a fear of failure. It's just like maybe you're trying, you know, maybe you're working towards your goals, but you're so scared of what if it doesn't work and so on, right? And all of that is unpleasant. We don't want to experience that unpleasantness. And it's, I mean, this is why I, I'm really, I'm not exaggerating when I say that virtually everyone is addicted to their phone because you, you don't even think about it, right? You, yeah. It's not a conscious thing. It's just like, oh, this is slightly uncomfortable. Let's let's get distraction. And we do it so often that we basically never, <laughs> we never go there, right? We never actually sit with those thoughts. We never let that play out. We never go, okay, well, why am I so worried about the future? Because there's maybe something to learn there. There's maybe something you need to do differently. There's right like on the other side of the unpleasantness there's maybe a lesson but we never go there we're yeah. always like oh a tiny bit of unpleasantness immediately let me get distracted right away yeah and it's sad and that's the power is that the power you're referring to i mean that that would be that would be a higher level of power someone who can say oh an unpleasant thing is happening to me and have the awareness that it's happening mm. and then make a choice about it that isn't compulsive right where you can say well Maybe I should journal about this. Maybe I should talk to a friend about this. Yeah. Maybe I should, right? Maybe I should yeah. do, or maybe I should just sit here and let these thoughts play out and see what happens. All of that are, these are deliberate choices where if you have the power to make those choices, you're already ahead of a lot of people, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah. man, this reminds me of uh, this analogy that you had. And I think it's very applicable here. Most of our problems are, you know, like, they're equivalent to my finger is stuck in the door. Right. <laughs> and I look at you, I'm like, hey, man, my hand really hurts. Yeah, let, like, let me get a painkiller. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, well, try this Tylenol. I try it. I'm like, I don't know, it didn't work. Well, try this. Try codeine, cocaine. You <laughs> yeah. know, it just escalates. <laughs> yeah. Then eventually Dean comes in and just opens the door. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, that feels so much better. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, exactly, exactly. And and that's, yeah, that's a good point, right? It's Often you have to actually engage with the pain and be like, why does my finger hurt? 
And you yeah. have to examine it and be like, oh, maybe it's because it's stuck in this door <laughs> and then you open the door, right? But if you if you always disengage from the pain and you always try to cover it with painkillers, you, you're almost like hiding the real solution from yourself. Yeah, and actually, okay, this reminds me of another thing. I don't know if this is tangential, but I think it's important. The world we live in, we are constantly inundated or, or told that we can consume or buy a solution yeah right the so if if i told you hey uh you come to me like oh i need need this or here's my problem and i'm like oh okay just go do this and you go do it and it works yeah now i've lost a customer (laughs) right (laughs) right right. i need to make money bro yeah so it's better like oh you need to take this pill forever yeah (laughs) yeah yeah. it's much better much better business yeah (laughs) absolutely so yeah, that's a, that's another layer yeah. of complexity to this. Okay, so we've discussed level zero plus a few tangents here and there, but I think they're applicable yeah. throughout. So it's not, it's yeah. not a, it wasn't a waste of your time basically. The next level is level one, mm-hmm. getting your shit together. Yeah, so this, this would be, to me, level one is at the same time, it is essentially the basics of, of gaining control of the major aspects of your life but it's also how you get into like the top 10% of human beings. And that's largely because the bar is very low these days. Um, but, you know, if you, and, and we generally talk about, uh, and we can link to this on a different podcast, we've talked about this. We generally talk about the, these different aspects of life, which are your physical, physical health, your emotional well-being, your mental health, and also like your cognitive uh, abilities, abilities yeah. essentially your social connections, your relational skills, right? Communication skills, all this kind of stuff and finances. And those are, I mean, obviously these are relatively arbitrary categories, but those are the five categories that we talk about where it's like, look, there's things you can do to like get basic control over these aspects of your life. And when you do that, you will, you will thrive as a human being because most suffering comes from a lack in one or several of these five areas. And it's not that hard. When you know what you're doing, it's not that hard yeah, to, to, to kind of- Your basic shit together, yeah. Yeah, to get, that's why I call it getting your shit together, right? This is not becoming super elite, the best in the world at whatever. Yeah. This is just get your shit sorted out on these five categories. And when you do that, yeah, that puts you actually into a very rare breed of human because most people do not have their shit together. Yeah. And and that is, to me, that's like level one. I call it level one because that's the level one of self-development or level one of self-improvement. Like get your basics sorted out. And you can then, like having your basics sorted out also gives you a foundation to get to a higher level at certain things. Because the more you are, like again, if, if we just take one of these, like let's say you have, um, your, your physical health is rubbish and you don't have control of your finances that puts you in a state of chaos and turmoil out of which it's very difficult to gain mastery of anything, you know, because it's like you're not sleeping enough, you're constantly sick um, and you're always broke. And so you're always like in a stress mode of how do I pay the bills? That's not a great place from which to be like, I'm going to do something amazing with my yeah. life. Right? I'm going to be a thriving individual. Yeah. yeah. And on the other hand, you do not need to be the world's healthiest person or the world's richest person in order to do something extraordinary with your life. You just have to have the basics covered. So that's why, that's what we call level one. Yeah, and I think the expectations are massively skewed as well, right? Like I can personally vouch for that framework. Whichever area of your life that needs most attention is the one that dominates your life, right? Exactly, yeah. So like if you're always broke, then hey, you gotta work on your financial shit. Yeah. So you can like rate yourself. Actually, this is an exercise we did with our men's group last year, right? Mm. On a scale of one to 10, don't pick seven because that's average. (laughs) That's the safest number. Scale of one to 10 across all five of these categories, rate yourself. Yeah, yeah. Whichever one you suck at, well, (laughs) there's your starting point. Yeah, exactly. So level two, top 1%, which if you believe Instagram is uh, practically every guy out there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, there you go. So yeah, level two, this is what, the the main distinction here between level one and level two is that on level two, optimization actually starts to matter. And so just to give an example, let's say for your physical fitness, you know, level one is train consistently 
and train, you know, in a way that is like, just do a decent train, whatever it is. Right. Do a decent training program if you go to the gym or, you know, train your, your sport several times a week or whatever it is, right? As long as you do it consistently and you do it non-stupidly so you don't get hurt or whatever, you will make great progress. And if you, like a non-optimal training program, if you follow a non-optimal training program consistently, you will be fitter and healthier than most people, right? Mm. And it's only after that, if you say, okay, I want to be extraordinarily fit and healthy, now it starts to matter things like, okay, exactly how do you program your macro macronutrients? Exactly how, you know, your exercise selection, maybe you have mesocycles of exercise and supplements and all this. Now it actually matters. Yeah. And as a side note, if you have no idea what the, what the fuck you just said, you're not here. <laughs> you're level exactly, one. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And basically don't worry about it until just regular consistent training has you hitting a plateau. Because you can get far with just yeah the basics. Man, <laughs> man, people are obsessed with data and stats and all this stuff. And, and it is entertaining to look at, right? Sure. They're essentially yeah. vanity metrics. <laughs> but this is where... I have, I critique things like the four hour body, you know, mm. it's like, it's not like, it's fantastic, but it's not for, for, I guess, level one or level zero people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. So that's what level one is. Like if your basics level are covered. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, sorry. You're right. That's what level two is. If your basics are covered, AKA you're in level one. You have now essentially moved to the top 1% of people who can focus on optimizing their different, the different areas of their life, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, I have two businesses. How do I hire more people or yeah. whatever? Yeah. Okay. And even, or, you know, if we take like finances, right? It's like level one is just get out of debt. Have right. your, and have basic, have a basic control of your finances. Like make more money than you spend. Build the savings, you know, just a little, little runway, like a rainy day fund, right? Yeah. Build up your savings and and again that that puts you ahead of most people who are just in debt. <laughs> yeah. And um and then level two is okay, now that you have that, and you have to have that, you have to have those basics. Where now you, you're consistently making more money than you're spending. You're putting some of it away. You know how and where you're spending your money. You have control over this part of your life. Now it starts to make sense to okay, how do I build wealth? You know? Do I start investing? What should I invest in? This kind of stuff. It really only makes sense once you've got the basics. Because if you're just broken in debt, who cares? Yeah. You don't have any money to invest. Who cares about your ideas for creating generational wealth? <laughs> exactly. Like, Dude, get yeah. out of debt. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's a fantastic point. All right. So moving on to the, the fourth and final level, level three, mastery and paying it forward. Mm -hmm. So is this like self-actualization? That's what comes to mind. Yeah, I would say so. So basically, this is when it stops being just about yourself. Mm. And... I think a lot of people who achieve a lot of success gravitate towards that. It just t tends to happen. And if it doesn't happen, you're probably going to be miserable because, and this is something we can see out of um, the field of positive psychology, out of research on what actually makes people happy. You can see that having a sense of purpose and meaning and doing something that feels like it's greater than yourself gives much more stable and much more long lasting sense of like satisfaction and happiness than hedonistic stuff and like self-concern. So mm. if you're just spending money on nice things for yourself and you're kind of just becoming more and more successful for yourself, then that is that never lasts, right? Then it's like, oh, I want to get the next promotion. I want to get a higher salary. I want to close the next deal. But the, the happiness never lasts. You're like, okay, yes, I did the thing. And then you just want the next thing. It's all fleeting, yeah. It's very fleeting, yeah. And so it makes sense, again, from if the goal is to have a good life, if, it, if the goal is to thrive as a human being, it makes sense to say, okay, now that I have taken care of my own needs and now that I've gained mastery in some aspects of my life, the next thing to do is to pay it forward and maybe help other people succeed where I've succeeded or, or you know, support a charity or start a nonprofit organization or, or do something that feels like it's not about me. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the things you can do are practically endless. I think th this is where successful people often become a victim of their own success. Because my assumption, and from what I've seen, is most successful people give back in many ways, right? Yeah. 
Now, the criticism to being successful can be, oh, you're, you just made money for yourself, right? But if that same person now every day is like, hey, so I gave 100 grand here. Mm-hmm. I gave 3 million there. I donated this. I built a school there. It's like, okay, dude, can you stop bragging about it? You know, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, but that's, and that's also, I mean, you, because you're not doing it for your image or you're not doing yeah. it for yourself at that point. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And I'm okay, saying. another thing I want to paint here, we talked about this concept yesterday, like A to B, right? Mm-hmm. So in your current reality, the person listening, your state of A, we described four potential states. One of these you most likely resonate with, mm-hmm. you know, for the most part. And let's be honest, it's probably level zero or level one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you're at level three and struggling, well, dude, join the coaching. What are you doing <laughs> listening yeah, to free exactly, shit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but okay, so that's our A state. Most likely zero or one. You're very disempowered. You compulsively watch porn and masturbate and you can't stop this and you're just having this struggling and suffering experience right Mm -hmm. now if we only discuss that then it's kind of reinforcing so the thing that i really liked about what you mentioned about what it's like to be in level three so if possible like try to imagine a version of you that has that has actually made it to the beyond the top one percent like what does that look like right Mm -hmm. and and I'm talking about beyond like cars and mansions and whatever. Like, what sort of impact do you want to have in the world, right? Yeah. If you can paint that picture of you, then you're using both motivations, the pain, motive, the push motivation away from pain and pull towards a positive image, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I also think that this is where we can come back to the idea of power because I think a lot of people are motivated to make some kind of a positive difference in the world. And the higher your own power level, the more you can actually make a difference. And this was, this was important for me because for a long time I was super concerned about, you know, various problems in the world of various, whatever injustices and, and climate change and all kinds of stuff. Right. I felt very strongly, like I have to do something about this. And at some point I realized like, unfortunately I'm not Elon Musk, right? I can't, I'm not the guy who can like, start a business that revolutionizes some sector as much as I would like to. Um, but what I realized is that me worrying about all this stuff while not actually having the power to do anything about it is not useful. It's not helping anyone. Yeah. And so I started my, I, I became an entrepreneur. I started these various businesses and these businesses have nothing to do with, you know, it's like I, I had a WordPress business, you know, fucking building websites, right? Uh, that has nothing to do with like saving the world, basically. But me making loads of money with that business and also learning entrepreneurial skills and building a network and so on with that business puts me in a state where I have much more power to actually make a positive difference to the world than I used to have. Hmm. And so that's one way in which even if you have very altruistic motives, even if you if your goal is really to make a positive difference in the world somehow, the higher your power level, the more impact you can have. And this is why it's super important to take care of yourself, right? Take care of your your own needs, fix your own stuff, become a powerful human being, and then make a huge difference. At least that's the, the yeah. path I chose. And and that has played out, like the, the things I can do now have so much more impact than things I could do 10 years ago. And And even if it's just like, donating to a charity, I can now donate more per year to a charity than I used to make in total salary, right? Right. So that's that's also why it's really important to level up your personal power. And another thing that I've also noticed is that it is, I think I underestimated, and I believe that probably many, many people underestimate how much of a difference you can make to people's lives by just improving yourself and then showing up. Yeah. Right. The the impact you have as a as someone who's gotten their shit together, as someone who's who has who has done the work essentially to become a better version of yourself, the impact you have in other people's lives just by showing up and role modeling a way of being is is honestly much greater. I mean, look, I've I've spent a lot of time like making content and teaching concepts and ideas and so on, but I've probably made a bigger difference overall through 
just being myself and having people experience me than I have through all the talking I've done about this stuff, which is a bit sad, right? Yeah. <laughs> I would like to, I'd like my talking to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to have more impact, but I think the truth is that me being me has more impact. Yeah, man, it is and it isn't, right? Like you remind me of, you basically just said, I lead by example. Yeah. That's it, right? Like, like if all else fails, just default to leading by example. And that is how, how change is made. Like, yeah. honestly, I'm gonna give an example of last year, right? You started doing smoothies and stuff, and one day you just had a six pack. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, I didn't know that was actually possible, right? Yeah. And that's what got me to be like, at all costs, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> if he can do it, why the fuck can't I, right? Yeah. But I knew everything before. I've read all the books and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I'm close, thanks yeah. to you, right? Yeah. Because that appeared in my life. Um, yeah, and I think also in other ways, like if I think about my own life, you know, the positive impact that just, you know, good teachers, good friends, good mentors have had on my life is insane, right? And also the toxic impact of, of toxic people is insanely huge. So yeah. the, like the ripple effects of, of doing work on yourself, becoming a better version of yourself, and then showing up in other people's lives is, is very, very significant. Yeah, and from a different perspective, it's be the change you want to see, Yeah. right? Uh, there was another thing previous to this that you were mentioning I wanted to unpack there. You were talking about take care of yourself first, right? They, when I was back in my level zero and one days, one of the things I, I remember was this like shame messaging for wanting better for yourself, right? Mm. Whether it was societal or if it was religious or whatever, or just from family, like, oh, but you should blah, blah, blah. And being selfish is bad. like. It may be true, again, in context at level three, if you're there, you have the ability to make a difference and you choose not to, that's yeah. probably bad, right? Because yeah. you have the ability <laughs> to do so. Uh, but there's a reason why in airplanes, they're like, okay, when the fucking masks drop, put the one on yourself first and then your little kids, right? Because yeah. if you don't take care of yourself and you die, yeah. they're by default exactly over, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I think the, the it's another example of like the, the messaging is misapplied, right? It's The messaging is true only at a certain level. Yeah. Um, and it's misapplied to basically everyone. This is just a, I guess, a side note, but anything we hear, we should try to contextualize it. Like, how does this apply to me? And if it doesn't, oh, this totally, was great yeah. advice, but not for me. Okay, so speaking of advice, we <laughs> let's dive into it. So level zero are mm -hmm. no life for buddies, people who are just excessively struggling with, you know, in this case, porn addiction or any addiction for that matter. Like, yeah, what, what would you say to that person? Be like, hey, Joe. <laughs> yeah. So level zero advice. The main thing is basically try to get small wins because what generally, and, and like what we can say right here is like sometimes jumping into the deep end works. And for in the Quit by Healing world, this would be Spartan mode, right? We, mm. We've made a bunch of videos about this. Spartan mode is something that I created as the answer to what is the best way, right? What is the best way to quit porn? What is the best way to overcome your addictions? What is the best way to like kickstart your self-development? And Spartan mode is a protocol that tells you essentially how to live. <laughs> that is very hard, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's very hard to do. It's like optimal across all aspects of your life pretty much. Right. And sometimes that works. Sometimes you go, okay, I'm fed up with being an addict and a DJ and and uh, and a no lifer, and you just go, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, and it's worth trying. Okay, it's worth trying, but it's just realistically, it doesn't work that often. Mm. And most people have probably actually tried this several times. Like most people, will be familiar with the with this kind of surge of motivation. That at some point, you know, maybe you're lying in bed at night after a specifically, a particularly bad day. You're really dissatisfied with your life. And you're like, enough is enough. This is it, right? This, I'm never again, never again will I live the way I've lived up until now. And you make a plan in your head. It's like, tomorrow I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. I'm going for a run. And then I'm going to meditate. And I'm going to take a cold shower. And I'm going to count my calories. And I'm going to go to the gym. And I'm going to work super hard. And I'm going to do all this stuff, right? And from now on, like you have the vision in your head that from now on, that's how I live. And again, probably like these, you have 
imagery and ideas that you maybe got you know, from Jocko Willink and Tim Ferriss and, and David Goggins and whoever else, right? These influences where you're like, that's how I'm going to live. That's what I'm going to do. And then usually what happens at 5 a.m. the next morning is you don't get up. Mm. <laughs> or maybe you try and you're super tired and you go for a run and everything hurts. And sometime by midday, you've basically given up on this plan. And many people will have gone through that several times. You wanted to completely change your life once and for all, and it didn't work. So that's why I say, look, it's worth trying. Yeah. Jump into the deep end, see what happens. But especially if you are at an extremely low power level, um, then it is you might have to just focus on getting small wins and slowly stacking small wins. Because for someone who's really, if your life is completely derailed, even just being like, okay, I'm gonna get out of bed before noon, I'm gonna take a shower, mm. and at some point during the day, I'm gonna go outside for like five minutes and like literally touch grass or literally touch a tree for the first time in months. Right. That might be the win that you need. Right? Yeah. And and I think it's very, very important to to realize that, yes, for many people listening to this, they're like, well, what are you talking about? I take a shower every day, right? How can this be a big deal? Something, that, yeah. But there, there are people who have lost all routine and all self-care. And there are people who have so much like social anxiety that they literally don't leave their house, right? And for for that person, the idea of going outside, like leaving the comfort of their little cave is actually quite terrifying. Yeah. And that is a big obstacle they have to overcome. And it is also an experience of, holy shit, I did it. I can do this, right? And you need to give yourself the, the experience of a little thing like, oh, I can do this. And then start trying to build momentum. And it can literally be the very basics. Like, okay, you get to the point where you're taking a shower every day. You get to the point where you make your bed every day. You get to the point where just like, you know, you go from a super, super messy environment to like you clean up some little corners of it. You go outside, you go outside for five minutes, you go outside for five minutes every day. And eventually you're maybe taking a half hour walk every morning and that is such a huge life upgrade for someone who's a real life, no lifer, right? And I think it's, we have to be careful. And again, this is where, you know, often the advice is like misapplied hmm. because for many people it's like, what are you talking about? It's not even a challenge. How can you, what half yeah. hour walk? What are you talking about, right? where you, you kind of want to say, no, be a badass, right? Like use this training program, follow, <laughs> you know, do your runs, whatever. And it's like, no, no, no. For some people, this is hard. This is hard to do, right? Mm. And I think it's also something where we tend to underestimate, right? This is it's kind of a cliche, but it's so true, right? We, we tend to overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can do in five. And it's that's a great example of that, right? Someone who struggles with the very, very basics, and is at a super low level of power, You, it's easy to overestimate what they can achieve in a year and be like, oh yeah, you know, you'll be running a marathon and you'll be running your own business or whatever next year. It's, no, probably not, <laughs> okay? Right. But if you start really small and you get those small wins and you get your very basic self-care under control and you, you take these small steps, you will be amazed at how far that momentum will take you in five years, right? If you keep going. Because the reality is that maybe you need like, maybe you need six months to like bootstrap yourself to to that kind of level yeah. where now you can consider most like common sense advice, right? Where that actually starts applying to you. But once you're there, you can start growing really fast. Yeah, absolutely. And man, a few things I want to mention here. Like some of the things we're talking about, they seem like non-problems. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm just, I, honestly, porn is one of them. Mm. Like, it's very recent that there is this emergence of, oh, porn is like an actual fucking addiction. It's, it's yeah. screwing people over, right? Mm. Uh, but if you were to, I don't, I don't think it's like socially accepted as an addiction, but it's socially accepted as like, ha ha, that, you yeah. know, what is type it, of porn do you watch? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's socially accepted about. as a normal thing to do, yeah. Exactly, but it's not accepted as like an addiction. So if you tell somebody, it's like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta quit this. And mm -hmm. they might like judge you like, you have a problem with porn? Like, what yeah. are you stupid? You don't like naked girls? Like, what's wrong <laughs> yeah, with Yeah, yeah. What the, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. the advice that you're giving, regardless of how it sounds or how it feels like, oh, but if I do this, other people will think this or say this. 
that doesn't matter. What matters is you have to start where you are. Yeah. That's essentially the point of this yeah, this yeah. podcast. Like start wherever you are mm -hmm. and whatever judgment you have on top, like, oh, but, you know, I'm um, whatever. I shouldn't be struggling with this. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? You are. Yeah. <laughs> right? So yeah, that's the hand you're given. You have exactly. to play Exactly. And you didn't choose that, right? You, you just have to, exactly. You, you Whatever your current situation is, that's the starting point. That's where you need to start. And and any judgment you add on top of that is not helping. It's basically. not helping, yeah. yeah. And so another thing I want to mention here is so for level zero, because okay, what I've been talking about now is like like serious level zero, right? A no lifer. But it's always a spectrum, obviously, right? You can also be at let's say the higher end of level zero, where you maybe are relatively well functioning human being, but still there's too much of your life, too many aspects of your life are like out of control. So it might be that, let's say, you know, you go to school and you maybe even get decent grades, but most other areas of your life are like falling apart, you know, and that and that can also be the case that and that's also still level zero. You can yeah. still, you can be like a function, you can be a high functioning addict. Man, right? most heroin addicts are high functioning. <laughs> Apparently, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. I had coworkers who were <laughs> okay. into all kinds of shit. Like, <laughs> okay. Fuck? And so you can also be at a, a level where it's like, okay, it's not that bad. You know, like, like we were saying, you're not afraid of going outside or anything like that. But addictions are controlling too much of your life, too much of your time, too much of your mind space. And addictions are one of the most important things to address, right? So to realize that, hold on, all of the compulsive behaviors, all of the things I'm doing without really choosing to do them, and that can be porn, social media, video games, various substances, anything, right? All of the things that you're doing compulsively are a huge thief of your time and your potential. And because of the way they change your brain, they put you in a state where you're less likely to be able to, yeah, make choices about how you live your life. So that's that's another thing, another piece of advice for, you know, how to go from level zero to level one is like, look at all the things you're addicted at or addicted to and address those. Those are the biggest obstacles to your growth. And look, this is the reason, by the way, why Quit by Healing is predominantly about porn addiction and dopamine detox, which is essentially also addiction, right? Right, yeah. So it's about it's about a, this dopamine problem of addiction because that's the main obstacle that blocks most men from becoming who they could be from, from realizing their potential. That's the obstacle, right? Mm. So if you remove that obstacle, you've done the most to be able to elevate yourself in all other aspects of your life. And, and I think it's also important to, to point out that you're not saying you have to be in control or command, or, right? Mm -hmm. You're just saying, no, you just get it handled, right? It's yeah. not out of control. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're just spending more time. Basically, one of the ways to think about it is you, you want to be spending more time in what I call deliberate action which is to say actions that you would, with a sober mind, choose to do, right? Mm -hmm. That's deliberate action. So if I'm spending my time, um, yeah, if I'm, if I'm like working on my project and then I'm going to the gym and then I'm eating healthy food, even if I'm doing it on autopilot, that counts as deliberate action because if you like took me aside and asked, hey, how do you want to be spending, how do you want to design your life? I would say, yeah, I want to do those things. But if I'm eating junk food, and and yeah, scrolling through social media all day and doing other stuff like that, that's not deliberate action, that's compulsive action. Because if you took me aside and be like, hey, do you want to be acting like this? I'd be like, no, actually, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't know why I'm doing this, right? <laughs> yeah, great point. Like, I, man, I need help. I can't stop. That's yeah. usually... That's usually how it feels. Yeah, yeah. yeah Basically, yeah. Or, or you might have moments where you like, almost snap out of it. It's like, what am I doing, you know? Yeah, yeah. And by the way, like all this stuff we're saying, I mean, I'm fairly certain I can speak for you too, but we have experienced this shit. Totally, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not just like, you know, with our fucking pen and paper or the, <laughs> yeah. as scientists. Okay. Uh, all right, we can move on to, or, or actually, is there anything else you wanted to add to level zero? No, I think that's it. Like, yeah, small wins and treat your addictions as a major obstacle. Like, And working through your addictions is going to teach you so much. So... Right, I think that that's the main advice, yeah. Okay. And yeah, I'd like to add one thing. Like there is a very good feeling in like for example for level zero, right? If I just write down three things I wanna do today. I wanna shower, I'm gonna go out for five minutes, and I'm gonna brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. And when I do them I check them off and I write like a W on top, mm -hmm. I feel good. I'm like, Whoa, 
I won today. Yeah. <laughs> and those things, like over time, like that, that is a like a physical representation or track record of momentum of building wins, right? Exactly. It feels yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> the reason I say this because I had that list. I, <laughs> I used to struggle with brushing my teeth. Right. That's how I did it. I was like, oh man, fuck, I got to do it today. <laughs> yeah. But anyways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that's good. All right, moving on to our our bros, our other bros, level one, getting your shit together, your basic shit together. Mm -hmm. So what is the advice for somebody who's a relatively functioning person in society? But mm -hmm. So this is this is a lot of people, right? Most yeah. people are, are stuck at level one or that, that's, you should be doing the level one work. And this is where, look, I, I think one thing that's worth mentioning here is that being at this level of self-development is often comes with like lots of internal quiet suffering which is to say that externally you seem to be doing fine. You know, maybe you have a decent job, maybe you're in a relationship, maybe you have, things seem to be going well for you. And you're the kind of person when people ask you, how are you doing? You go, oh, I'm fine, <laughs> right? Great, yeah. how are you? <laughs> yeah, but you have a lot of internal turmoil. So things like maybe you feel like you can't really be yourself. You feel like people don't actually know you. They only know like the person you pretend to be, you yeah. know, or you have, you know, you're always worried about, oh, do I fit in? Do these people like me? Oh, that you're ruminating about something you said uh, to someone, right? Um, or maybe, yeah, maybe you're in a relationship. This was me as well uh, for a long time in my life. Like I, I had a girlfriend, but it was a toxic relationship, right? Mm -hmm. It was not a good relationship. And I was not happy, and it was, but I was unable to do anything about it, yeah. right? Speak about low power, right? Um, and another thing that is also from my from my own experience, right? A lot of nice guy stuff, like you don't stand out, stand up for yourself. You don't know how to create boundaries. So you're often suffering in relationships, really, in, mm. in all kinds, you know, including professional relationships, right? You have people taking advantage of you. You have maybe lots of negative thinking, right? You have like self-loathing, essentially. That was also me. Like I basically hated myself when I was younger. But from the outside, you, you can't see that. You can't, you know, you maybe see me walk uh, on the street and you're like, this is just a dude walking on the street. What you're not seeing is in my mind, like I'm, have, I have all these negative thoughts. I have all this internal tension, right? Yeah. And that is, that is also important and it's also super disempowering. Um, and it's important. So one thing I want to say is like, this is not normal. Even though it's common, I know it's common, Right, because if you if you yeah. go to whatever Reddit um, or some other whatever internet community and you look for that problem, you'll see that millions of people report the same thing. Yeah. So it's common, all of the stuff I've just described, but it's not normal. This is not what life is supposed to feel like. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's supposed to be a pleasant experience to be you. And level one stuff, is in part about like the external getting your shit together, but it's also a lot about internally getting your shit together. So now let's, let's just quickly cover. So the advice for level one is basically, again, like we've mentioned before, you have the different aspects. You, so you have physical, emotional, mental, social, and financial. And there are relatively simple things you can do in each of these categories to get your basics covered. And the... I would say the two consistently true things are one, focus on consistency, not on optimal, right? What you want to do, you want to do, make sure that you have habits that you do consistently that give you positive results in these areas of your life. And it's not about perfection because this is where people get hung up, mm. right? This is where people get hung up where um, you have something like, you know, if we just take health, right? You go, okay, what is the optimal perfect diet? What's the perfect training plan? But then you don't do it consistently. It's pointless. And it's much better to do a simple training plan you can stick to and keep doing it. And this is true for all aspects, right? And then the, the second part is remove friction. Basically make it as easy as possible for yourself to get the desired result. So a couple of examples of what does that look like? Um, yeah, if you, let's say you want to lose weight and you look up what's the best way to burn fat? What's the, what's the most effective way to burn fat? What will you find is some kind of a, you know, a Tabata hit training on yeah. the assault bike or something, right? Which is, yes, it's the most effective way to, bone, to burn the most calories in the shortest amount of time. But it also is extremely difficult 
and it makes you wish you were dead, right? If yeah. you if you're doing a Tabata, and this is like especially if, like if you do the Tabata protocol, it's a very simple way to find out whether you're doing it right or not. If you would rather die than do another round, you're doing it right. If you still want to live, you're doing it wrong, right? Yeah. That's how hard it is. It's so hard to do. It's only for absolute masochists. Yeah. And the truth is, yes, I'm sure it's a great fat burning exercise. <laughs> the truth <laughs> is most people will do this once and then be like, never again. <laughs> yeah, can I add something to that? <laughs> to put this in context, for all the gamers out there, if <laughs> anyone has ever played Dark Souls, <laughs> That game is so insanely difficult. <laughs> One of my friends, he gifted it to me. I had no idea what it is. Right? I pop it in, I play, I'm like, what the fuck? Why am I getting my ass kicked in the beginning of the Non-stop, game? Non-stop, yeah. And I just gave up. And right. there are two types of gamers, who, yeah. ones who enjoy that and yeah. the normal ones. Yeah. So <laughs> those guys are the hit people, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have to be a masochist to like this. But my point is, right, you can try to force yourself to do that and it'll be extremely hard. You'll hate it every time. You'll, you'll have PTSD from doing it, all, you know, all yeah. kinds of stuff. What's, and you won't do it consistently. So it doesn't, it's basically, it's not the best way to burn fat. It's, it's the best way to burn fat once for five minutes and then never again in, yeah. in practice, right? Because you won't want to do it again. On the other hand, if you say, you know what, I really like rock climbing. I'm going to go rock climbing with my friends once a week. And another thing that's fun is, I don't know, some other sport. Oh, I, or you go to CrossFit class and hopefully, look, hopefully you manage to find a CrossFit class where they actually, you just won't snap your back in half a few weeks in, which is hard to find sometimes. But if you find a good CrossFit gym, right, where they actually know what they're doing, then you might find it's way more fun to train with my friends like this and to have like this kind of group momentum and all that than just going to the gym by myself. Even though probably by going to the gym by yourself, you could design a much more optimal and much more customized training program. But because you'll go to the CrossFit thing consistently because you're having fun, that is the better training, right? This is kind mm -hmm. of the thing you have to change in your mind. It's like this, the theoretically best thing is not always the practically best thing, right? right. Um, or again, like with, you know, with movement, health, exercise, make a habit of going for a walk every day while listening to an audiobook. Yeah. Which how hard is that? It's not very hard. It's actually very enjoyable. Yeah. You're you're doing two good things for yourself and it's so much easier and and actually just walking more is great for your health. And it's it's great for even weight loss, right? Everything, yeah. Yeah, it's it's such a good habit and it's easy. And yeah. it can e and it can then feel like, well, uh, shouldn't I be do so doing something harder? No, you don't have to hate it, right? The, the things that are good for you can be things that you enjoy doing. Yeah, man, this is like this is something that I love about your philosophy is reduce friction and make it fun. Yeah, right. The things like if you go back to as you were speaking, I went back to high school mentally. Hmm. We used to play basketball like eight, nine hours a day. Right, because it's fun. Because it's so much fun. <laughs> I, I've played to the point where I had to throw up because I was dehydrated. It was like 52 <laughs> degrees in Libya, outdoors. But it was just that much fun, right? right. You just keep going. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this principle is the principle of make it fun, make it easy, mm -hmm. and do, do something you can do consistently, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And you can do that across all areas of of your life, right? Because and always essentially seek for the non the low friction, enjoyable way to get the result you want. So um it, and it can also be something like look, when it comes to productivity for example, one of the best things you can do is just remove your other options. So mm -hmm. you and it, it doesn't mean it's going to be super fun, but the point is if I'm trying to work and my phone is on my desk and it's, I'm getting notifications on my phone the whole time, then it's super hard to stay focused yeah. and do work, right? And of, of course, I'm constantly going to be distracted. And then at the end of the day, I'll feel like, oh, I didn't get anything done today. And by just removing the temptation, I remove the phone, I turn off my notifications, I close all the apps I'm not using, I make sure maybe I put on my headphones, noise canceling mode, you know, just I make sure that and I'm still going to be working hard, so it's not always like super fun, right? I'm still yeah. going to be have to do make the effort of doing deeply focused work, but by removing all of the the distractions and removing all of the other options, I make it easier for myself, right? I make it easier for myself to get the result that I want, which is I want to feel productive, I want to get stuff done, right? Right. And yeah, again, like this is true for so so many things, where I think what we're really talking about here is that like 
the the perfect is the enemy of the good. Right? Yeah. Because to give another example, like let's say with social skills, social life, right? This is also something that was a huge problem for me. I didn't have any friends. I I didn't know how to talk to girls. Like I didn't have a dating life basically, right? And now what can you do about that? Well, there's, there's lots of things you can do, but some things are super hard, which is like cold approach, right? You learn how to approach girls out of the blue and try to get their number and stuff, which is, look, it can be fun to do, yeah. but it's very hard. It's very high friction, right? Yeah. Some things are really easy to do. Like you go to a dance class and you're suddenly interacting with all these girls. Yeah. And, and the, the teacher is like, hey, so go dance with that girl. Yeah. Right. She has no other option. <laughs> she has exactly. She has no other option. But and at the same, and you're having fun, and you're interacting, and you're learning how to interact with with women in a very like positive and polarized, way, yeah. um, feminine, masculine way. And your cha- basically look your chances of just getting your fill. You get your fill of interacting with people, and it feels good. But also your chances of just making friends there or that turning into a date are pretty high even if you don't make any special effort, right? Yeah. Compared to, or even like, yeah, if you're on Tinder, you can be on Tinder all day and it's just frustrating. It's yeah. annoying. And then you're like, oh, how do I optimize my profile? How, what do I text her? What Especially do, oh. for guys. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think I need the six pack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so you can give yourself that experience of like frustration and a and lack of results, or you can find some way to, and the dance class is just one example, or, you know, you go to meet up, and you look at all the stuff that you find interesting, and guess what? Yeah. Many of them women are going to be there. Bro, breath work. <laughs> right. Shit, right, you know? right. Like, so there's so many options where you can get exposure. You can get that kind of social exposure. You get, get to know people, build your social circle in a super easy way. It doesn't even feel like work. And my advice is generally just do that first. Look for those easy wins. A, a good prompt here, you know, if you're thinking about, like you said, you can rate yourself on these five categories um, and look at where are my strengths and weaknesses. And you can ask yourself, okay, what is a skill that would make my life better in one or several of these categories? What is the skill I'm, I need to level this up? And then ask yourself, what's the easiest and most fun and lowest friction way to do this? And just list out all the ideas that come to mind. Because sometimes just asking the right question is all it takes, you know. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then the the end result of this and we'll link to this other podcast where we talk about this in more detail, but the end result of this is that with relatively low effort, I mean, I'm I'm saying relatively here, right? It's still effortful, oops. I'm saying relatively here, but it's still effortful. But with relatively low effort, you can establish a whole series of little habits in your life that put you in the position where all of these, where you got your shit together, right? Where now you are physically healthy and you're on a track of increasing physical health and wellness and you're on a track you learn how to deal with your emotions you have some introspective writing practice or some meditation practice or something that where it's just like okay i have a way to process this stuff instead of just shoving it down that's that's the default uh, emotional response that men have to everything right just shove it down mm. until you explode in anger <laughs> um and yeah, and then mental, right? Like it's like I'm reading books, I'm learning things, I'm using my brain, I'm strengthening my brain. It's the opposite of what addiction does essentially, right? Social, I'm doing something to stay in touch with people, I'm making friends, etc. And financial, like I'm, yeah, I have my finances under control. It doesn't take that much effort. It's not a, her- a heroic effort to get the basic habits in place where it's just like, okay, these things are taken care of. And Again, that's like we talked about before. That's the basis. From there, you now have so much more flexibility and so much more power to then choose maybe, okay, I want to get super rich or I want to get super fit or I want to really dive deep and solve my dating problem. But you'll be much more able to do that from the basis of having your shit together in all of these areas. Yeah, Man, an analogy that comes to mind, the person that we're talking to, what he wants to do is launch into outer space, right? Mm -hmm. But doesn't have a launch pad. Exactly. Level one is build the fucking launch pad. Yeah. And once the launch pad is there, it's well, the next yeah. obvious step is to fucking launch, right? Yeah. And I also would say, like, I think people often underestimate how uh, how powerful it actually is to just get the basics sorted. Yeah. And I, I do think that also, like, media consumption stuff, it gives us a distorted view. So, again, if we use, um, like, social, you know, if we use fitness as an example, unfortunately, 
on social media and in movies and so on, we're constantly being shown these hyper idealized bodies. Yeah. And it can make you feel like what I need to do is I need to have the perfect program and also, you know, steroid use is becoming more and more common and popular. It's like I have to take steroids, right? I have to take steroids in order to build these huge muscles because that's what it means to be an attractive man. And it can put you in that cycle of always, you always want to do the optimal thing but you fail and you want to do it again and you fail and you want to do it again. And the advice I'm giving is like, no, just do activities you find fun. Focus on consistency. Don't worry about that. You know, don't worry that much about trying to be this, um, having this bodybuilder physique in yeah. 30 days, right? Because first of all, it's not going to happen anyway. But also I think people really underestimate the value of just being a fairly fit person, right? It's like, you do not have to look like this in order to get the things that you think you need to look like that for. And and what I mean specifically is like, first of all, okay, as, as a man, if you're physically fit, it is, I would say that the two most uh, salient results you get from it is basically a high status thing, right? And the two most salient results you get from that is you get more respect from men and you get more adoration or attraction from women. And that's yeah. probably what you want. Those are the two things you want. You do not have to look like a fitness model to get these. You don't have to look anything near like a fitness model to get them. Because, and there's also this huge difference between real life and, and online, right? It's like, if I, you know, if I took my shirt off right now and flexed, you would look at that and be like, well, compared to the guys I see on Instagram, this guy is tiny, right? Mm. <laughs> and that's true. Like, listen, yeah. I, I do not have a fitness influ influencer physique. But in the real world, in most settings, I'm one of the fittest guys there, right? And that's what matters. That's what actually yeah. matters, right? And it doesn't take, and, and I think, again, this is true across the board, right? You do not have to be at this elite level to get what you want. And just getting your shit together is actually so powerful. And the, again, if we talk about, like, if you talk about your attractiveness as a man, having your shit together makes you so fucking attractive. Like when women clock on to the fact that you've got your shit together in multiple areas of your life, that makes you so attractive. You do not have to pull up in a Lambo for that. Yeah, the, the target locking system. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh shit. <laughs> no, it's a fantastic point. And man, like one experience I've had whenever I've, somebody has asked me for advice where I'll be like, oh, do, do something like this. We'll just stick to the fitness advice. Work out consistently. It's like, oh, but that's not like the fastest way to get ripped. True. Or get a six pack. Yeah, but you're 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 so ridiculously out of shape. You look like a pear. Like, dude, the <laughs> six pack is years away. Yeah. If if ever a possibility for you, right? Right now, it's not. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm being a bit mean, but I think the point I was trying to get to here is like, at level one, you should really be feeling. If you're an ambitious guy, I guess, you should feel the pain of mediocrity. Mm. It's like, why am I allowing myself to live this bullshit life <laughs> where I'm just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and look, I think that even if, because the thing is you said about the launch pad is important, right? Even if you have the ambition, it's like, no, I want to be, I want to be excellent at all these things. Yes. But then cover the basics, cover Absolutely. the basics. Like if you're, if you're ambitious, get your shit together fast. <laughs> Yeah. But you can't skip past it. <laughs> Absolutely. Man, I, I heard this story about Michael Jordan. Every single practice session, he started with chest passes. Right. That's the shit you learn when you're three. Like perfect fucking thumbs yeah. and fingers and whatever. That's the greatest of all time. Yeah. Every single practice session. So the and, basics. Yeah. And you hear that. You hear that about all. Every master is basically obsessed with the basics, right? Yeah. That's, that's all it ever is, right? Yeah. Even in business. Like yeah. do focused work. Yeah. We'll get nowhere if we were on our phones right now. It's like, hey, wait, I got to respond yeah. to this. Okay. So anyways, moving on from level one to level two, top 1%. Mm -hmm. That sounds awesome. So here, I think, so basically this is, this is where a much of the self-help advice that you find online actually starts applying, right? Mm. So this is where listening to the elite coach, listening to the billionaire CEO and so on, in order to level up that part of your life, that's where it actually starts mattering. And I think th this is, again, it's uh, maybe worth repeating, right? The whole point of what we're talking about here is to make sure that you get yourself to the level where the high-level advice actually applies. 
and that will be level two. Like you've got your basics sorted out. And so now, like I was talking about before, right, when it comes to your fitness, it's like now thinking about how exactly do I do the programming and what's now maybe supplements start to matter, right? Mm. And before that, it just doesn't. Consi if you don't train consistently, it doesn't matter what you optimize. And this is true, again, across all the areas. The thing for level two is basically the ideal point in your development to do the level two work is when you've hit a plateau, when you're doing the other stuff consistently and you've hit a plateau. And then it's like, okay, now it's time to optimize because now you, you know that you've maxed out the basics essentially. And yeah, that's when you... So the other thing to be realistic about here is that you will not be able to do this in every area of your life because this is a point where, okay, if you want to gain this higher level of mastery at something, it means you have to pour a lot of time and energy and attention into it. And you can't do that with everything in your life. So this is where you have to start setting priorities and basically be like, look, if I'm going to be the world's best pianist, then the only way to get there is to, sacri to, to pour so much of my life into it that I'm probably going to have a lack in other areas of my life, right? Because mm. it's the kind of thing where it's like, oh, instead of having a social life, I'm practicing for five hours, right? Yeah. And you have to be clear about that. It's like, okay, what is important to me? Where do I want to reach this higher level and just be clear about what am I willing to sacrifice, right? So for me personally, I never wanted to be world-class at one thing because of this, because I want to have a, I want to thrive as a human being. I want to have an overall good life. And I'm not going to be the world's best at anything unless I sacrifice almost every other aspect of my life. So for me, that was always like off the table, really. Um, but obviously you can get into the top 1%, like the top 1% is still pretty crowded. It's still a lot of people there, right? Hmm. So you can get into the top 1% in one or two aspects of your life without getting to absolute world-class elite status. And, but even there, it's basically you make your choices. You're like, okay, if I want to really level this up seriously, it means that I have to put in, I think 10 years is a good horizon, right? If you say, okay, I want, I want to build wealth, let's say, I want to build real wealth, not just have my finances in order, expect that it will take 10 years. And it's 10 years where you will be taking some focus away from other areas of your life. Hmm. And another important aspect is, so that would be like the first thing to realize is set your priorities and be, be aware of what it costs to get really excellent at stuff. But the other thing is also, in order to make sure that the rest of your life doesn't just fall apart when you do this, this is a good time to make sure that other aspects of your life are almost like automated. They're like delegated to habit. So where you can say, look, I can maintain my level of health and fitness and I can maintain like my basic connections, you know, basic social connections and so on in, in ways that take very little time. That's like automatic, right? It's just like, yes, every Saturday evening I go hang out with this group of friends and that's how I stay in touch with them and I don't have to spend... Yeah. And then during the week, I'm just like locked into my zone, right? Um, or, and yeah, with, with like your fitness and health, it's like, okay, I've just gotten my healthy meals dialed in. I've gotten my exercise habit dialed in. It doesn't take any extra effort because I'm just maintaining that level, which means that I can pour lots and lots of my time and attention into mastery in one area without the other areas of my life like falling crumbling apart. Yeah. and falling apart. Yeah. And that's how I would recommend doing it um, with by like minimizing the sacrifice, right? So they're not wrecking other areas of your life while you're doing this. It's kind of like using leverage, right? Yeah. Because you could also, I mean, if you're able, I mean, you could hire a cook or a meal, meal prep service or something right. like that, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. To just make it easier for yourself again. It's, yeah, it's yeah, same thing at a different level. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Literally. Yeah. And then finally, level three, this is where um, really like beyond what we've already talked about, I don't think there's much advice to add. The main thing is like, if you've gotten there, like once you've, re and I think you'll know, right? Or at least from in my life, my experience has been that there have been like fairly clear chapters in my life where I'm like, I, it's very clear that I've come to the end of this chapter. And I think that if you cultivate some awareness and you pay attention to this, then as you become more successful, you will realize I've come to this point where I've reached all these goals and like be open to that and be like, oh, maybe now is the time for me to really start paying it forward. Maybe now is the time for me to stop 
focusing on me, me, me all the time mm. and start being like, well, how, how can I serve others? How can I be of service to others, right? How can I use everything that I've learned, all this power that I've gained, everything that I've done for myself, how do I now use this to the benefit of others? And just to be aware of that and be open to that because like we talked about before, that's going to make you happier. That's going to lead to a better life than if you just blindly try to keep accomplishing more and more and more with, a, with no real reason. Yeah, great point. Okay. So to wrap up, we have four levels, right? Level zero, no lifer. Level one, get your shit together, the basics. Level two, top 1%. Once you have the basics down, it's quite easy to get there. And level three is mastery and paying it forward. Mm -hmm. Right. So for anybody who struggles with quitting porn, we've essentially discussed in quite detail that experience and the things that you could do in lieu or in exchange for uh, spending your time watching watching porn. Mm -hmm. And pretty much like the advice we're giving here is start where you are. Yeah. Right? And this entire podcast is in service of helping you determine where you are so you can start there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And to if you're if you're aware of this, I do think you can just save a lot of time and energy by realizing that if you're at level zero or level one, all this elite advice that is obviously interesting, right? It's interesting to hear uh, the world's most successful whatever talk about what they do. It's very interesting. So it's obvious that these podcasts, you know, that type of podcast is so popular. Um, and this and self help advice often. Um, is about these extremes, right? Yeah. It's about the extreme. It's about the best, perfect, optimal way to do something. But just have the awareness that often that's not in practice. It's not the best and optimal way to do something, right? It's, there's a difference between theory and practice. So to me, that's like the main takeaway that I hope people get from this is that, oh, sometimes you just have to do some basic work in order to get to the point where you where most of, let's be honest, most self-improvement advice actually applies to you. Yeah. And man, even in interviews of like elite athletes or you know these trainers and coaches what is the question they ask what would be your advice to yeah. someone who's starting out right yeah. now yeah yeah you still want the contextual advice for app True. applicable right now and yeah and sometimes i think sometimes they deliver yeah. but often if you're talking to someone who's spent the last 30 years working you know with the world's greatest athletes they're pretty out of touch with where most people are let's be honest yeah. <laughs> well that's why you hear stuff like perseverance yeah. hard work yeah. show up every day yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah no shit but what do i actually do yeah this so yeah that's uh as usual if you have any questions about this you can go to the youtube version of this leave a comment there you can also go to the first link in the description and that leads to the podcast page there's a message button there you can tap that button and leave a voice message that we will respond to and also if we play that voice message on a future episode we will anonymize it so you don't have to worry about your privacy, especially if you ask something around porn addiction. And also, if you appreciate this kind of content, you can help me spread this message by basically engaging with it. So wherever you're listening to this or watching this, you know, hit the like button, leave a comment, mm. share it with a friend. The truth is the world is governed by algorithms at this point pretty much. And that's what they look for, right? Is your engagement, your clicking the buttons and stuff, We'll mm. tell the algorithm to show this to more people. That's one of the best things you can do to help out. Yeah. Also, one more thing. Like, man, if you found anything that helped you and it comes up in a conversation with your friends or something, like, oh, man, I'm struggling with whatever, porn. I, that's it. Like, hey, check this out. That's yeah. it. That's it. Like, right. Don't go out of your way to be like, look. Yeah. yeah. Like, no. It's just when it comes up. Yeah. Have our back. <laughs> it makes a difference. <laughs> All right. With that, thank you for listening. And I'll see you in the next one.